Good afternoon, good afternoon. That's me, Olga Gaetane. And uh, as I was talking on my live show today about business whilst you're traveling, I was talking about challenges. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. I had a challenge. As I said in my life, that actually today I was talking about how to run a business when you travel around the world. And one of the tips which I was sharing, it is being emotionally flexible. We all know what means being flexible in terms of your time and your schedule, but not always we know how to be emotionally flexible. And what do I mean by being emotionally flexible? That means when things don't work out the way you want them to do, you just adapt the situation, you take it easy, you take a deep breath and you come up with a plan B. Right? So this video actually right now is a plan B to what was supposed to be a live video. And that, as I said earlier, is a perfect example how sometimes things don't work out. And all you can do is just to keep your sanity healthy and keep your emotional level, your anger level very healthy. Because I could be easily right now being furious and angry. But saying that, you know what? I'm in a beautiful location. I am in a very small village, um, very close to, um, I think it's called, called Cotswold, which is like a little peaks. And I'll go to explore there, the little villages. And the reason why I haven't settled from my place to there yet, because the internet connection will be even worse in there, <laughs> right? But what can I say? Sometimes you want to explore remote areas. And this is what I do right now. I really enjoyed that today. It was a walk alongside the river Thames and it was beautiful, amazing. I saw beautiful flowers and swans and ducks and cows and everything else. So I really enjoyed my walk. And maybe I'm so relaxed. Probably. <laughs> right? But let me actually now uh, discuss more in details what I was sharing in the live video. And I will post this video. I'll make sure it is posted on LinkedIn and also YouTube and Facebook. Just like usually I go live on all three channels. I will post this video so everybody who was watching me live can actually watch it back. And everybody who was live with me, thank you so much for joining. And thank you for being patient. Thank you for waiting for what's next after Olga disappeared. Because this video is that next plan B. So as I started in my video talking about the simplicity uh, as a tip number one, which to me is the key. Simplicity is the key when you travel and work around the world. It doesn't have to be just your country because I, I mean, I believe you can travel even in your country. I think it's fun when you do it where you live because then you can explore more. And right now I travel in the UK, which I really enjoy. Even though it's a lockdown, there is a very, very limited availability uh, in terms of hotels. But it is possible to stay at some places. And I keep social distancing, but I keep it simple. And the reason why I keep it simple, because it's easy. right? When you keep it simple in terms of traveling light, not to take too many stuff, because you really don't want to drag stuff around between hotels, right? But at the same time, to keep all what you need. So keep it simple, but at the same time, you have everything what is necessary. So for me, it was my laptop, it is my phone, my chargers, it is my extension, it is my lighting. I keep all the stuff with me in the bag because I know I will need them at some point. Everything is plugged into the extension straight away. All I have to find is just one socket, right? This is simple. That's it. But when it comes to um, flights and um, quite limited spaces, because right now I'm traveling in the car, right? And I'm just staying in hotels. When you fly, of course, that involves taking more bags. That's it. However, saying that, when I traveled last year for a month and I was away between four different countries, I was in Germany, Tenerife, Singapore and Spain four different countries, four different locations, slightly different temperatures, I still managed to stick to one large suitcase and one small suitcase. And a small suitcase was all my work-related stuff, so I don't have to dig through them all in a large suitcase. And my large suitcase was just my everyday stuff, toiletries and everything else. So keeping that simple is one of those things which I learned and uh, that really, really helps, right? 
Second thing, as I mentioned before in, during the live video, uh, but what I'll do, I will replace the live video with this video so you don't get confused really. But second tip which I was sharing was actually being um, adaptable, having low expectations, not in terms where you're staying. I have high standards, right? And I do like my high standards, but at the same time, I have zero expectations about locations and places where I'm going. And the reason why, because I believe if you keep your expectations very high, for example, oh, last trip where we went to Thailand, it was XYZ, or the other trip where we went to, let's say, USA, it was XYZ, <sighs> you don't really enjoy the travel. So what I learned during my travels and then when I work around my travels is actually having zero expectations. So I get surprised and I wonder and I allow things to happen because then it's like, oh my God, it's exciting. Every time when something happens, it is exciting. And then when things don't happen, I just say, oh, well, you know, it just happens that it's not supposed to happen. That's it. And sometimes that's all what you can do. That's all what you can do, right? So it is important to actually have high standards, but low expectations so you can be surprised and you can enjoy what is happening, right? And the other thing, which I start with this video, which was about emotional flexibility. When things don't work out, come up with plan B, maybe plan C, maybe plan Z, <laughs> right? There's so many things which you can do when things don't work out. Like literally just now, as I was leaving my room, I um, the connection in the room was even worse. So I was thinking I will be downstairs and I'll do the live show from there. And the connection there is really bad. And I don't blame this place because it is really small village. But at the same time, I came up with a brilliant idea. I actually will get myself portable modem. Ta-da! How exciting is that, right? Because again, the thing is, with nowadays technology, how advanced we are yet not everything is that advanced as we want that to be so for example the platform which i'm using and i'm happy to share with you what i use it is called restream and restream allows you to go to three different platforms it goes to facebook youtube and linkedin for linkedin you have to have permission for uh, youtube and facebook you don't but Restream has quite limited possibilities and limited options for mobile phone streaming. So here, right now, I decided to go to the car. We're going to be no noises, right? But that means I cannot go on my laptop live because I'm not going to have any connection. Simple as that. And for better a quote of this video, I decided to record a video and then post it on YouTube, post it on LinkedIn and also post it on Facebook. So as you can see, even though my plan going live did not work out, it's all about how to handle that, being emotionally flexible and being quick with your decisions. Because when you are going into the state of anger, and Tony Robbins talks a lot about state, if you haven't heard of Tony Robbins, I would suggest you, strongly suggest you, type on YouTube, Tony Robbins State, and there'll be lots of videos about that. And he talks about when you are in a state of anger, you switch off your thinking. The creativity goes away through the window, right? So here, that's why I learned and practiced how to stay calm, how to think on the spot, how to be quick with decisions, and same time being joyful. And still enjoy that because what can be better than actually enjoy the process and guess what you know it doesn't have to be live every time it could be just recorded video and that's the beauty because i like to walk my talk and like to show how if something doesn't work out you can always will come up with a plan b so this is folks is my plan b having you on video right now the next tip uh, which I wanted to share and I haven't managed to share was uh, using tools which will help you to plan and organize your time. This very rarely will be affected um, when you travel and work for business because it's all um, doesn't require that much internet power. For example, online calendar I can access from my phone, from a laptop. And I choose to use online calendar. Uh, in uh, connection with um, 
or like join together with Calendly. So Calendly, this is an, um, you can use in the web browser, but also it is an app, which you can use uh, to send your clients appointments and that they can book it through Calendly. Of course, with regular clients, it's much easier to book appointments because it happens just during the session towards the end, or we just pre-book them far in advance. However, when there's a new client and you have to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you're wasting your time. So it is quite powerful to use something like Calendly. This is what I use. You don't have to use that, but this is what I use because it allows you to send one link, but then it adapts to international times. So all my international clients, when they receive my link, they see the availability of mine, my availability during the times when they are available during their hours. So it shows within their hours. Right. And it's really powerful. And I've done the same thing when I was booking John Gray, the author of Men from Mars, Women from Venus. When I was booking uh, Brad Sugars as well, we were using Calendly because our time was adjusted automatically. And this is amazing. It also allows me to send invitations to people to so have it in the calendar straight away. So it works. And when things work, it's just amazing because that means you, you save time on sending invitations and emails and text messages and WhatsApp messages back and forth all the time. And uh, another thing which comes uh, under the tip number four about technology um, is using international bank card. I use Revolut when I travel because it allows me to transfer money from my bank account to Revolut bank account, which is virtual bank account, effortlessly, quickly, within minutes. And the most amazing thing, there's no fee. Absolutely. Because when you go to ATM, you always get charged. When you transfer money, you always get charged. And the most beautiful feature of Revolut is the fact that when you are having pounds, well, I have pounds because I'm based in the UK. When I have pounds in my Revolut account, and let's say when I was in Singapore, it was automatically converting my pounds into whatever currency was there, I can't remember, during the purchase. So I don't have to transfer money every time and I don't have to convert money every time. So this saves you time massively, right? With payments, you also can receive payments onto your Revolut account. You have sort code and account number and uh, other details just like with any other bank. Or I also use PayPal. So as I said, that's why they're on the tip number four, because it's still about technology. It's still about something what connects you with the world. But it doesn't require that much internet connection. So that usually doesn't let me down unless... I am like in the middle of a desert, <laughs> which doesn't happen that often. All right. So here's the tip number four about technology. And um, one more tip which I would like to share is uh, tip number five. I know that um, not many people will agree with that. Some people will be afraid to do that. Some people probably done it already. Maybe haven't enjoyed. Some people probably want to do it, but they're quite scared. And I would say when it comes to traveling and working in different locations, it is about enjoying every moment. Enjoying every moment and learning how to be okay by yourself. How to be okay by yourself and with yourself. Because it is about how can you enjoy whatever you are 100%. It doesn't count that easy. It comes with the practice. And it is about learning about yourself. When you travel and work at the same time, you learn a lot about yourself because you're on your own. I love traveling with people and I've done it multiple times, including family and friends and relatives. And it is amazing. Don't take me wrong. It is amazing. But when you're on your own, you learn a lot about yourself. And I would suggest always use a journal because journal is a very powerful tool where actually you can journal your feelings, you can journal your discoveries, you can journal your revelations, you can journal anything what actually 
makes you tick, what makes you think, what makes you learn more about yourself, right? That's important. And you know, I must say, right now, I really miss being on live video because usually there are comments and I can interact with you and I can answer your questions and I can see where you're watching me from and I can greet you. And it's totally different, totally different. But saying that, again, going back to tip number three, being adaptable and emotionally flexible, it is about enjoying every moment. When things don't work out, enjoy why they don't work out. And here I would like to drop something else, and I hope people will understand it. I will not take it wrong. It is about intuition. When you trust your intuition, and when you see something don't work, doesn't work out, this one you know that it is all for a higher purpose. Like, for example, today, right now, after this video, I'm setting off, but I don't know why I'm setting off, because the hotel which was booked, they called me back and they said uh, that they had to prioritize um, key workers so they cannot take me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, well, you know, that means I have to go and be somewhere else. And that's exactly how it works out. Amount of times when things would not work out before would end up in something very powerful, amazing, tremendous, was just crazy. And every time I was thinking, oh, I wonder what it's all about. And you know what? It always works out. So just like now, I'm making this video because I couldn't go live. Just like after this video, I will be setting off driving somewhere. I'll, I'll see. I'll go to probably coffee shop if they open. I'll have to find out. And uh, I will um, find myself a different place where to stay. But that's the thing. It is about being open-minded. And that's my next tip. It is about being open-minded and ready. Being ready to change your plan. My favorite phrase is, if you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plan. That's exactly what happens when you are pre-planning your entire life. Being as a coach, being coach who plans everything, right? My life is pre-planned. I love when I can be so flexible. I love to be challenged. And don't take me wrong, I love planning and I'm planning freak. But at the same time, when I face the situations when things don't work out, I'm thinking, hmm, that's an interesting challenge. Well, what am I learning right now? Right? What could I have done before to prevent it? Could I call the hotel? Of course I could. But guess what? I was booking it last night and I was not willing to call anybody. <laughs> right? So, of course, there are different options. But there's a thing. Because you learn about yourself, you become more and more open-minded. And you become very resourceful and outsourceful. That is important. And my last tip, tip number seven, is something what I'm sure many of you already do when you travel and work. It is about memories creating memories take pictures share them um i don't know make posts about them and it's not about being all the time and sharing every picture but people love inspiration that's what i learned people love inspiration people love observing where you're going people love learning about that and when you share it's really beautiful after a while to go back to your wall and see where you have been or if you don't like doing that, I appreciate maybe you don't like social media. But that's a good point. If you don't like social media, how would you watch this video? Hmm, good question. But let's say you watch it on YouTube because it's going to be on YouTube, right? So when you create memories, you can always go back and remember. Some people that don't like take pictures because they think they remember everything. And it's not possible. Your memory can never remember every beautiful moment, every funny moment, every challenging moment, every incredible moment. So when you make pictures, when you memorize everything, this is when actually you create special memories and it becomes very, very unique. So these are like, like seven stepping stones, seven tips, how actually you can enjoy whilst you're working and you have this laptop lifestyle and I must say that I think most important for me here, it's about flexibility. It is about releasing 
the fact that you want to pre-plan everything, releasing the fear of what if something doesn't go well, releasing the fear of, uh, you know, being judged if something doesn't happen. Because I know I made a post today. Yay! I'm here to teach you today how to work from anywhere in the world and you can make money. Yes, I do that, right? But it doesn't have to be that I must be perfect. I'm not perfect, right? And it is about, as I said before, being flexible, flexible emotionally, flexible in terms of planning, flexible in terms of what happens. I hope it helps. I hope it serves you. I'll be definitely making another live video where actually I'll be answering your questions and I'll let you know when it's going to happen. But for that, I'll sort out portable modem. So actually I can be connected effortlessly, but I will be making that so I can actually share more technical things about how to do that. Uh, however, these seven steps, if you apply them, that already will make it possible. That already will make it available to you to travel around the world and actually make money. Of course, we haven't covered the part about how do you find what's your passion? How do you find what's your purpose? How do you find what's your mission? That's total different conversation. But as long as you have internet, you can do anything you want. Anything you want. And when you don't, you just say, oh, well, next time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed these and I hope these seven steps or tips, they will help you with your business. I know this is not rocket science, but sometimes we need to be reminded of something very simple. And if you need any of my help, I'm here to help you. Because I know for me, when I was seeking help, or when I was asking for obvious answers, that was helpful. I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful day. And once more, those who were joining me during my live show, thank you so very much. But this video will go actually live. Uh, not live. This video will go actually on Facebook, LinkedIn, and also YouTube. So everybody can learn about those seven tips. But not live this time. Maybe another time. <laughs> Take care. God bless you.